Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Wisnowski. I'm really happy to be here with you this afternoon supporting Mako Labs as they take FIBO into Poland and the rest of Europe. This title of this talk is, it is 2013. Do you know where your money is? I say not. Me, I have three degrees, technical degrees, most of my career is in the private sector. But in 2006, I was asked by the Secretary of Defense to join the U.S. Department of Defense to help to uh, get the where's my money problem solved. When I discovered semantics as a way to do that, when I left last year, I was asked by the Enterprise Data Management Council to help do the same thing in the financial community. Little did I know, once upon a time, there were no standard definitions of financial terms. The financial institutions could interpret the meaning of rules and regulations of the industry, each in their own way. Every day, new financial instruments and transaction types were invented. One day, major companies in business many decades began to collapse and lead the world into general economic depression or recession. Because of that, regulators struggled mightily to understand the condition of the world's economy. It became clear that the companies themselves did not know their true financial exposure. They did not know the provenance, the truth about their data. Because of that, an effort was launched by the industry to develop a financial industry business ontology called FIBO, <clears throat> excuse me, a common vocabulary based on international standards that would enable companies to better communicate within and among themselves and would enable regulators to perform meaningful questions of their data. And to finally, with FIBO, the dual purpose of reducing the cost of manufacturing data required by law became nothing, and Congress and regulators were confident in the providence of the answers to the questions of the industry. And we want to say they all, lived, they all lived happily ever after. How could this be done? This is called the five-star data path. It begins on the le lower left-hand side with uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet with, with PDFs with common ways of looking at data. It moves up then to CSVs or, or comma subverted variables, which is the standard, and then URIs. URIs began with the Internet, and this enables us to precisely know the data we're talking about. Finally, five-star data very top of this links this data together in real time so only the source has the truth and that source may have just changed with five star linked data with semantic web we can understand exactly the meaning of all data how does it work this is a common kids tinker toy picture three objects that's all we have so subject predicate object subject predicate object Dennis is a person and there we have subject predicate object as a literal and the literal says exactly who this person is. Uh, Dennis, the person, is uh, American. Dennis, the person, lives in Naperville, Illinois. And then the really good news is we can expand these ticker toys by combining these edges together, subject, predicate, object, in any way that we want to infinitely. What are the kind of benefits we get? Here's common vocabulary in action. We have this triple store. It's what they're called, subject, predicate, object. We can say that a person has named Dennis Wisnowski, person wrote book, book has name. We can answer the question, who wrote this book, Dodaf Wisdom? But we can't answer the question, where was this person born who wrote this book? We would have to look at another data store. This data store has person born in Washington, Washington is in Pennsylvania, and so forth. If we want to answer the question, where was a person that wrote this book born, however, we couldn't do that. We'd have to add that data to either this graph or the other graph. But we can push a button, we can execute what's called an RDF a triple store query. We're using Sparkle. Sparkle is also a W3C standard. This person is the same. Those two databases are combined instantly at that link. And we can answer any question in either one of the data stores. The really good news is that the data store uh, can, data stores can be separated. They can each go their own way. We only want to link them at that instant of time when we want to know the answer to the question. What can this do? Well, the financial crisis was caused by we couldn't do that. We could not link data from one financial institution to another. We were in crisis, and we've been working our way out of the crisis since that time, since the time about 2008 is when the Semantic Web, rather when the Enterprise Data Management Council began work on the Semantic Web. So why? We have two great developments in content management, SGML, HTML, good for the last century, not good for this. XML is a messaging standard, fantastic for communicating between uh, 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 two forms and getting that data there, then not good figuring out what it means. Uh, what is bond transparency? What was the closing price? How do we do systemic risk reporting? We can't do that. So we're saying forget about nomenclature. 
forget about formats, forget about data models as such, and instead align on data meaning. The financial industry is based upon legal obligations and expressed in contracts. We have to know the precise meaning of all that data. Basil has been saying so for the last several years. They talk about big data, but then they add this, this that, that we have to have an intelligent semantic network for systemic risk analysis. That, and there's a reference here that you can look up later. So big data is wonderful, but what does that data mean when we find it? That's the whole purpose for FIBO. And the FIBO solves the problem that looks like this. We have to know who these organizations are that are connected together. Big Bank is connected to Wall Street Bank. Uh, there there has been a, been a string of ownership issues of a particular contract. We can tell by being able to find this data and link it together what exactly it means. So what do you see in this picture? This is a classical 100-year-old old woman or young woman. Is it okay for different people to see, interpret this picture in different ways? The answer is, of course it is. That's its whole purpose, to exercise your brain. What about here? Is it okay for us not to know the particular transaction is the default event, or that a transaction increases or decreases collateral. Is it okay for people to interpret this picture different ways? Of course not. The meaning, the semantics of the data must be precisely defined so that we have a precise answer to a question that we asked. Today, in the current state, that doesn't often happen. Reporting entities have forms. These forms are interpreted by the regulatory authority. The regulatory authority has a great deal of uncertainty. Uh, the content reports, are we comparing data with like data? Uh, do we know the data quality and the provenance? Do we really know the original source of this data? FIBO changes all that. The data stored on these forms as data entities are mapped to FIBO. FIBO has the precise meaning of each term, and the regulatory authority receives standardized, granular data aligned with standardized ontology FIBO. We use these semantic queries to assemble the information, to federate the information in real time if that's necessary, and then the data stores are left alone. So FIBO, the Enterprise Data Management Council is creating FIBO. FIBO is the identification of legal entities, their jurisdictions and ownership control hierarchies, identification of financial contracts and instruments, classification and data aggregation, and data linkage aggregation, actionable risk intelligence, and more. FIBO has many participants. There are more than 130 DMC members. They include large financial institutions worldwide, and of course, they also include participation of the regulators. FIBO comes in two flavors, if you would. Top-down business conceptual ontology, conceptual level abstraction at uh, of concepts so that everybody can agree on these terms. And then there's the operational level. This is where the operators, the banks, are going to be, be working. Decisions necessary to ensure a consistent and compliant execution with the contents of FIBO. So technically, the bankers are on the left side. What they're going to see is their data doesn't have to be changed. It can be the same as it always was. We can map their data to FIBO, to native RDF triple store, subject predicate object. In the middle are the messaging standards like FPML. That's also okay because we now will know the meaning of each of those strings within that XML data source. Then on the right side, the regulators have FIBO, they're looking for answers to particular questions. Their existing data stores are mapped to FIBO, and they match on the other side the data coming in from the regulators. So we know that we have precisely defined terms and answers that have provenance. We know the source of the truth. Another really good thing we get with this technology, no other, is semantic reasoning over data to infer classification and relationships. In this chart, we have, we have a, a credit default swap that's both fixed and floating, and we can infer that it's a credit default swaps with both fixed and floating because it has two legs. We can, so we can see those two legs. Furthermore, we can infer without having the data built into the database, rather built into, without, without having the logic built into code. In fact, there isn't any code. The logic of the meaning of this data is in the data itself. So we know that these Trader LLC and Acme LLC, Acme Inc., are trading with each other because we see trades that go back and forth between them. Therefore, we see trades, they must be trading, we see two legs, they must be fixed and float, credit default swap, unequivocally. The FIBO is getting there by developing standards with the object management group. There are two today that are in the final stages. Business entities, who are these organizations and foundations? How do we build ontologies short-term and long-term? How do we link these ontologies together? 
there's a roadmap that has been created for FIBO. This roadmap has these two already deliverables of entities and foundations. It will have other deliverables in 2014 and beyond. The exact deliverables, whether they be securities or loans or derivatives, depends upon the constituency, the people who come up uh, and who want to do work in particular cases. It's just, it's just to them. So I thank you very much. I'm sure you're paying attention to all of this. And if you'd like to learn more about the technology, you can go to YouTube, type my name in, and there's a three-minute video there that talks about how DOD did it.